Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the turning moment diagram. So as we know that the turning moment diagram, also known as crank effort diagram, is the graphical representation of turning moment for crank shaft torque for various position of crank. So as we know that the turning moment is given by T equals to Ft multiplied by R or Fr sine theta plus sine 2 theta over 2 square root of n square minus sine square theta. Here theta is the angle turned by the crank and T is the torque for various position of crank. So we can say T is the function of theta. So plot between T and theta is known as turning moment diagram. So here in this torque, we can consider the inertia of connecting rod as we discussed in the last class. But in most of the cases, the inertia of connecting rod is neglected and the plot between the turning moment because of the piston effort only is considered. And this is the plot for the T and theta. So theta is the angle turned by the crank is represented on the X axis and turning moment is represented on the Y axis. So this is a typical turning moment diagram for a single cylinder double acting engine. So here we will discuss every concept regarding the turning moment diagram using this plot only, right? So let's consider there are two strokes. One is out stroke, let's say which is ABC. So here ABC is the out stroke of engine. And this C, D, E is the in stroke. C, D is the in stroke, right? So during the out stroke, during the out stroke, crank turned from the zero to 180 degree. And we can say from this diagram, we can say, when the crank turned by the 90 degree, T is the maximum, right? So T turning moment or torque on the crank shaft is maximum when crank turned by 90 degree angle and turning moment becomes zero when crank turned by 180 degree. And similarly, during this stroke, the turning moment is maximum when crank turned by 270 degree and when the crank is as 360 degree, again turning moment becomes zero. So we can say turning moment fluctuates from maximum to minimum value, right? So now let's consider turning moment or we can say work done during one cycle is the work done during one cycle is equal to the area under the curve. So we can say area under a, B, C, D, E. So we can write A, B, C, D, E. So this is the work done because work done is given by the multiplication of torque and theta, T and theta. So we can say work done during this one cycle is given by the area under the curve, which is A, B, C, D, E. And we can find out the T mean, which is the torque, or you can say resisting torque against which engine is working, which engine is working, can be find out using the formula, which is given by T mean equals to area under the curve A, B, C, D, E, or we can say area under A, B, C, D, E divided by angle turn during one cycle, which is equal to two pi here. So this is how we can find out the T mean. Here T mean is given by this O A, this is T mean. Now we'll consider the concept 
or fundamental of this diagram now let's say the crank is turning from p to q right from p to q will consider this duration of crank turning so during this duration the work produced by the engine is given by the area under the p b small b this c and q we can say this is the or work produced by the engine is proportional to area of this curve right we can find out the area under this curve or we can say this is the work produced by the engine during the rotation of crank from p to q now the work done by the engine or we can say work taken from the engine is equal to the area under the t mean curve and this is the work taken from the engine which is proportional to the area of this curve right area of this rectangle which is p b c d this is the work taken from the engine so we can say the engine produced the excess work or excess energy which is equal to b b c so the excess energy produced by the engine during this rotation is equal to the area of this loop right so this is the excess energy produced by the engine while crank turning from p to q now this excess energy will increase the speed of the engine we can say speed of the engine will get increased and this excess energy will get stored in the flywheel right now we'll consider the rotation of crank shaft from q to r so second we'll consider the rotation of crank shaft from q to r so during this rotation we know that the energy produced by the engine is proportional to the area of this equal to this right area under the curve c c d right this is the energy produced by the engine and or energy taken from the engine is equal to this rectangle which is q this c this d and this r so this is the energy taken by the taken from the engine and this is the energy c c and d which is highlighted by red pen which is energy produced by the engine and area under this curve is energy taken from the engine so we can say the energy taken is more than the energy produced so energy equal to this we can say energy equal to this area or proportional to area of this curve is given by the flywheel to the engine and speed of the flywheel or speed of the engine is reduced so this is the energy given by the flywheel to the engine during this stroke now if we consider the rotation of crank from r to s this is the rotation of crank from r to s during this we can say the energy produced by the engine is proportional to the area under this curve right area under this curve which is r d small d e and s so this is the energy produced by the engine and energy taken from the engine is proportional to area of this rectangle right area of this rectangle energy which is proportional to the energy taken from the engine so again we can say the excess of energy which is equal to the area of this loop this is the excess of energy during this rotation of the crank shaft and if there is energy is excess the speed of the engine will get increased and this excess energy will get stored in the flywheel 
Now, if we consider the rotation of crank from S to E, right? So during this, we know that the energy produced by the engine is proportional to the area of this loop, which is area under this curve. This is the energy produced by the engine, right? Or we can say the energy taken from the engine is proportional to the area of this loop right which is s e f e right so again we can say the energy taken from the engine is excess than the energy produced by the engine so energy equal to the area of this segment will be supplied by the flywheel to the engine and speed of the engine will get reduced so we can say during this cycle the energy which is given by this area then energy given by this area and then the energy given by this area and then ultimately energy given by this area and similarly we can say during the rotation from zero to p the energy produced by the engine is given by this loop right given by this this is the produced energy and energy taken from the engine is proportional to the area of this loop right and so this is the lack of energy with the engine and speed will get reduced and this energy will be supplied by the flywheel right so these are the so we can say the area of these loops is represents the fluctuation of energy during one cycle so now if we consider the rotation of flywheel from p to q right so during this rotation we can say the energy is absorbed by the engine equal to or proportional to this area so the speed will be maximum at q point right or again if we consider the rotation of crank from q to r so we can say this is the energy released by the flywheel equal to this area and speed will get reduced the speed will be minimum at r point similarly the energy during this rotation energy equal to this loop will get stored in the flywheel and speed will get increased so at s speed will be increased high right similarly at this b e point again speed will be less so we can say during one cycle there are two points on which speed is maximum and there are two points where the speed is minimum so out of these two maximum speed greater from or we can say out of these two maximum speed greater one is the maximum speed during one cycle and out of these two speeds at these two points the minimum of these two will be the minimum speed of the engine and difference between maximum and minimum speed will be considered as fluctuation of speed right so this is about the turning moment diagram for single cylinder double acting engine now we'll talk about the turning moment diagram for a four stroke cycle internal combustion engine so here as we know that in the ic engine four stroke ic engine there are four stroke one is suction stroke one is compression stroke then working stroke or power stroke this is exhaust stroke so during compression stroke we can see that during this turning zero to one the loop is negative and for a time being this becomes positive because of the inertia of the reciprocating parts and rotating parts this loop becomes positive right so this is because of the inertia as we know that during the later half stroke of the engine the piston will get deaccelerated and during the deacceleration of the piston the inertia force will help the piston effort so because of that this get positive right and during the compression stroke there will be a negative loop 
we have to supply the energy to the engine during the compression stroke so this is negative during this stroke and during the power stroke we got the power from the engine and this would be a positive loop and during the exhaust this almost this is negative and for a time being this becomes positive because of the inertia of the reciprocating part and rotating part so this positive loop just because of the inertia here right and this is the power stroke during which we got the power from the engine so this is the typical diagram of the four stroke engine right similarly if we are talking about the multi cylinder engine so variation of fluctuation of energy will be less and here if we consider three cylinder engine this is the first cylinder and for this cylinder the turning moment diagram is given by this triangle this triangle right similarly during the for the second cylinder this is given by this triangle and for third cylinder this is given by the turning moment diagram is given by this triangle so resulting turning moment we can find out something like this so this is the fluctuation of energy will be less in the multi cylinder engine so we can say this becomes t mean and during this there would be a positive energy or flywheel energy to the flywheel get supplied by the engine and during this the flywheel will supply the energy to the engine and there would be a fluctuation of energy during one cycle or we can say there will be a fluctuation of speeds so this is about the turning moment diagram or basics of the turning moment diagram in the next lecture we'll find out the energy fluctuation and speed fluctuation of flywheel because of the fluctuation in turning moment diagram during one cycle so thank you